Good morning! Today we'll be using a simulation to explore circular motion, specifically circular motion around the planet or an orbit. We'll see how circular motion is connected to centripetal forces and we'll come to fundamentally understand what that equation actually means. And finally, we'll use that equation to determine the speed required for a satellite to travel in a circular orbit when it's at a specific altitude of 2,500 kilometers. So let's commence operations. So let's start off with a satellite that's at a height of 2,500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. We're not going to give it any launch speed. Let's see what happens when I press the start button and remove my hand. Notice the object falls straight down. That's exactly how we would expect it to behave. If we drop an object, well, it's going to fall. So, now let's take a look at the simulation. Notice there's a big green number here in the middle of the screen. It says 6,702. Let's dial in that number and see what happens. So we'll press the start button. And notice for that specific speed, the object orbits in a circle. And the question you may be asking yourself is, how does this simulation figure out that speed? If we dial in a lower speed, it's no longer circular. And in fact, the object crashes into the Earth. If we dial in a higher speed, it's no longer circular. Now the object orbits in an oval or an ellipse. So today we'll be understanding how that 6,702 meters per second is actually determined. That's our goal. So if this was a question on a physics test, it would look something like this. A satellite has an altitude of 2,500 kilometers above the Earth and travels in a circle. Determine the speed required for the satellite to travel in a circle, along with the orbital period. So in general, circular motion requires a force pointing towards the center of the circle. The vector attached to the shuttle there is the force. For circular motion, this force is called a centripetal force. Centripetal forces always act perpendicular to the motion of the object. So notice the velocity is drawn, and notice the force acts at a right angle to that. Centripetal forces accelerate objects by causing a change in the direction of motion. However, the speed remains constant. So if we look at the shuttle at this point, and then sometime later at this point, notice the direction of motion has changed. So keep that in mind, that centripetal forces only change the direction of motion, not the speed. For objects in orbit, whether it's a planet, a moon, or a satellite, gravity is a centripetal force that keeps an object in orbit. So we label that vector now as Fg. So our goal is to determine the speed required. Well, let's see how we do that. Whenever we start off a force problem, we always start off with an F net statement. In this situation, there's only one force acting on the object, gravity. We will assume there's no drag in space. And that's a good assumption at 2,500 kilometers above the surface of the planet. And so we write an F net statement. F net is only equal to FG. F net's basically asking us what forces are acting on the object. The other side of the equation is telling us only one, the force of gravity. However, for circular motion, the F net statement is very specific. We no longer call it F net, we call it FC. And C stands for centripetal. So whenever dealing with circular motion, whenever you're writing an F net statement, you no longer write F net, you write FC. 
Now, according to Newton's second law, what is F net always equal to? It's mass times acceleration. Well, similarly, Fc is always also equal to mass times acceleration. Except notice the acceleration has a subscript C. The C stands for centripetal acceleration. Acceleration that causes objects to move in a circle. The expression for centripetal acceleration can be written in many different ways. Today we're going to write it as v squared over r, where v is the speed of the object traveling in the circle, and r is the radius of the circle, as shown in the diagram. Substituting, we get mass of the satellite times the speed squared of the satellite divided by the radius of the circle, equals the force of gravity. Now this is one of the common errors that students make when writing tests. They start off by saying r is equal to 2500 kilometers. Now as you can see from the diagram, that's not what r is. That is what the altitude is. The other mistake, however, is that they leave the unit in kilometers. As we're going to see in a moment, we need the unit in meters. So this is incorrect. So looking at this diagram, you can clearly see that the radius of the circle is given as the radius of the Earth plus the altitude. Substituting the numbers, the radius of the Earth is given by 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. The altitude is 2.5 times 10 to the 6 meters. We end up getting this answer here. So we'll label that in our diagram. Now, this is another common error students make. They're very used from an earlier course in physics to write Fg equals Mg, and it makes sense. Except in this situation, the problem is that the g value at 2,500 kilometers above the Earth is no longer 9.8. And so this is incorrect. So please keep that in mind. Because we're not at the surface of the Earth, because we're at 2,500 kilometers above the Earth's surface, the g value is no longer 9.8. Point eight. It's actually significantly lower. So we can't use a simple formula of mg. And so the question is, what expression do we use for the force of gravity? Well, we use Newton's universal law of gravitation. g is given by this value. It's called the universal gravitation constant. M1 could be the mass of the Earth in kilograms. M2 is the mass of the satellite. And R is the separation distance measured between the two centers of the objects. And so now we'll substitute that expression. And notice something happens mathematically. Notice that the mass of the satellite doesn't matter. And so we're left with this expression when simplifying it. And if we simplify it a bit further, we're left with this expression for speed. Substituting our values, we have our g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24, and our distance, 8.88 times 10 to the 6, and we end up with the following speed. If you recall from the simulation, that was the exact same speed that the simulation gave us. Second part of this question was to determine the orbital period. How long does it take for a satellite to go around the Earth once? Well, to go around the Earth once, the distance traveled is 2 pi r, and the time is denoted as capital T, which stands for period. Substituting our numbers, we end up with a period of 8,325 seconds. And so, a little while ago, we saw that the mass ended up cancelling out. And this has some really interesting consequences. And if you're interested in those consequences of the mass cancelling out, then watch the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.